Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. There's no concussion-proof helmet. You know, I mean, everybody, I think that's the big myth that everybody thinks. A recent study has sparked debate over how much protection hockey helmets actually provide. Thank you for joining us tonight. There's no question helmets are a very important piece of gear protecting hockey players. But a study is claiming that more than a quarter of helmets are unsafe. Those tested included helmets worn by youth hockey players all the way up to the NHL. Now, no helmets were given a top rating or a rating near the top. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson shows us the safety concerns over athletes in the community. Millions of Americans play hockey, a sport with the highest rate of concussions, according to experts. Brains are the one thing we just really can't fix. Many popular helmets are making the do not recommend list after being tested by Virginia Tech University. The study claims those wearing the lower ranking helmets are at risk for getting at least six concussions a season. There's no concussion proof helmet. You know, I mean, everybody, I think that's the big myth that everybody thinks. Hockey players here in the Valley typically buy their own helmets. Schools don't recommend a certain type as long as they're safety approved. Too many kids are buying helmets on, you know, whether you know, kids' friends have it, or it's the high-end, the new helmet, instead of actually getting a helmet that fits properly. Former hockey player Rory Sandvik, owner of Hockey Zone, where many locals get their gear, disagrees with the study. To be honest with you, I have five helmets that I would wear. Say if I was still playing competitively and I had to pick between five helmets, three of those five didn't even get a rating. Sandvig adds you should take helmet advice from those who've actually taken a hit on the ice. The study will show you that budget really doesn't play a lot into it because some of the ones that actually got rated higher are less, are a lot less money. But you want to get something that fits correctly. I mean, not looks good, but fits correctly on your head. Experts say millions of athletes suffer brain injuries a year, adding that you can't be too careful when keeping your kids safe. It can affect their behavior and their mood as well. So they're very, very common. Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. Now, if you're interested in seeing how the study rates hockey helmets you might own, just log on to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on this story. We have some breaking news now on the body that was recovered today from the Cheyenne River along Goldenwood Drive in West Fargo. It's not clear yet, but the clothing on the body appeared similar to what was worn by Cole Schwint, the man who went missing while snowmobiling on the Cheyenne back in December. Two flooring installers were searching a wooded area for wood burls when they spotted the body in the water. Officers confirmed the sighting. The body has been sent to the Grand Forks Autopsy Department for positive identification, which is scheduled for tomorrow. We have new information about an emergency landing that led to a small plane hitting a car on Highway 10 near Holly, Minnesota. Police say it was nothing shy of a miracle today that the pilot and his passenger and the driver of the car all walked away uninjured. The plane's propeller sliced the metal on the Clay County vehicle and broke a window. The plane also had about $20,000 in damage. The pilot says he stopped in Holly to pick up a passenger and refuel. Shortly after takeoff, the engine stalled and the pilot had to find a safe spot to land. That ended up being Highway 10. The driver of the car says she could see the plane coming in her rear view mirror, quickly approaching her car. And it was okay except that I landed on the runway and then ran into the car because I'm driving, I'm flying a little faster than she's going. The FAA is taking samples of the plane's fuel. Samples were also taken from the fuel at the Holly Airport. The fuel pumps are now locked. No one will be able to get fuel from the airport until the test results are back. Well, another beautiful day out there today, and hopefully the evening will be the same. Let's turn now to Lisa Green with the latest on our forecast. Lisa? Thanks, Steph. It should be a great night to get out and enjoy some mild temperatures, light wind, and, of course, sunshine for as long as we have. It's 64 degrees right now in Fargo, and it's 61 in Grand Forks. Many of us hitting the 60s today. Holding on to the 50s up north right now. We're at 55 in Roseau and Thief River Falls. Through the rest of the evening hours, expect those temperatures to stay in the 50s in the Fargo-Moorhead area, dipping down into the mid to even some low 50s later tonight with skies remaining on the clear side. For now, we do have some changes coming up in the forecast, but first... We've got some even warmer air on the way. I'll have details on that coming up in just a few moments. All right, it's going to be pretty nice out there, Lisa. 
to be pretty warm. Awesome. Okay, thank you so much. Now, don't forget, you can now get the Valley News Live news and weather text alerts right to your phone. You will get the latest breaking news, weather, and other updates on your mobile device. All you have to do is head to valleynewslive.com to sign up. We have new information for you tonight about a man found dead on a golf course in fertile Minnesota yesterday. The man has been identified as 35-year-old Andrew John Springer. Springer moved to Fertile last summer from Washington State. The Fertile High School golf team was practicing yesterday afternoon when a team member spotted the body lying beside a tree. The tree is located only 100 yards from Springer's apartment where he lived with his wife and baby daughter. The preliminary autopsy report shows no foul play. Um, that's that's a suspected what uh, from the scene and then what they, the preliminary um, was suspected hypothermia. Any weapons or anything uh, taken from the scene that would indicate suicide? Uh, nothing that uh, we saw that would indicate anything like that. Investigators are still waiting on the final autopsy report, which is expected to be out and would indicate whether drugs or alcohol were involved. Charges have been dismissed against a Fargo man who was arrested after a fight outside of a downtown Fargo bar last December. 21-year-old Alexander Lee was accused of punching and causing serious injuries to an employee of the boiler room. The assistant Cass County State's attorney says a follow-up investigation prompted her to drop the charges against Lee. She says cell phone video of the fight appeared to show what she considered mutual combat. Lee was blacklisted for many bars after his arrest. Some bars posted flyers with his picture on it saying, Alexander Lee is no longer welcome here. North Dakota's Attorney General is coming to the state's defense against Minnesota's attempt to shut down construction on the Oxbow Hickson Baki flood control project. Attorney General Wayne Stengem filed a brief in federal court in support of the project. Minnesota wants a federal judge to halt construction until an environmental impact study is completed. But Stengem says there's no legal basis for Minnesota's ability to extend its law beyond its borders. He also says there is no proof that the levy will have a any impact whatsoever in Minnesota. The hearing was recently held regarding the project and whether it should be halted. Stengem says Minnesota can... Stengem says that Minnesota cannot interfere with the uh, free uh, situations going on in the state, but cannot interfere with them. Now a reminder to Cass County residents with the warm and the very dry weather on its way to Cass County, emergency management requires prior open fire notification. Residents are asked to notify the Red River Regional Dispatch. Whenever you're going to do something like that, you can call the number on your screen. Now the requirement helps to eliminate unnecessary fire department response to controlled agriculture burns. Later on Valley News Live at 6, Sunny, Sunny the Bison reclaims its spot in downtown Fargo. And with that dry, warm weather continuing, we do have a red flag warning in effect for much of North Dakota. Fire weather watch for some of our counties in our viewing area as well. I'll have details on that heat and sunshine on the way for tomorrow coming up right after this break.